everyone. It's, of course, very difficult to follow up with Avik. Avik and I are ex-colleagues as well. We used to work together at one point in time. So, of course, we know each other. A lot of examples that Avik used, in fact, use uh, or leverage Google uh, data analytics technology. So, the diabetic retinopathy example or the Niramai example, all of that are, are uh, you know, powered by Google. So, we don't really publicize, publicize that too much because we want the end outcome to be more relevant. And that's exactly what I'll talk about here. First of all, it's great to see everyone on a, on a busy uh, you know, morning with Ganesh Chaturthi, all the traffic coming back in, and everybody back in the, in the room physically as well. So as it says here, uh, you know, very, very briefly, there's lots to talk about, but I'll essentially cover uh, what is Google doing in the space of data. It's, it, Google is a data company, right? And again, uh, Avik used the example of Google search. There's a lot that happens at the back. The minute you search for something, it's, it's telling you what to look for. So it's actually completing the sentence for you many times. But you know, there is, of course, a huge farm, a big uh, cloud service running at the back, doing multiple permutation combinations and giving you what, what's really needed, right? What we're essentially saying is, can that same piece of technology that powers things like Google Search or Maps or YouTube, for that matter, be available to everybody as a service, as a cloud service, right? And that's essentially what we're trying to do with Google Cloud. So, uh, I'll talk a bit about, I'll throw some numbers out there, but you know, again, none of this data is hopefully not new to you. Uh, you've been doing you know, some of these things for a very long time, I'm sure. But just wanted to throw it out there just to uh, essentially tell you what's, what's, what's happened in the last few years, right? So uh, a lot of organizations talk about data, they talk about AI, uh, great examples that we just saw some time back, right? But very little or very few of them actually are beneficial. They still become, uh, you know, experimental projects. They still become... Uh, you know, areas that some team at the back end is doing some work of generating some reports or dashboards which have been around for so, so many years, right? So we, we believe there's a lot of interest for the last, uh, you know, this is a 2021 report, so not very old. A lot of interest, a lot of organizations want to look at using technology as a differentiator for their business, both the new age, what we refer to as digital natives who are starting their businesses on the cloud, and those that have been around for hundreds of years or 50 years or more, right? They want to evaluate, essentially, now transform themselves as well to, to being much more nimble and using technology to their advantage. But very little of that actually translates into the way they actually operate on the ground, right? So, and, and again, I'm not going to go into a lot of uh, specifics or details, and this data, again, hopefully is, a, is known to you. It's been around for a while now. So we, we looked at, you know, everybody's talking technology, everybody's talking data, but why so much, uh, so little being done overall, right? So one of the first big challenges is it's, it's there. I mean, if you look at, structured, unstructured, real time, all of that has been around for a very, very long time. I think the third bullet is where it's actually what has emerged in the last uh, few years saying, yes, there's a lot of data. Le yes, it's all over, uh, you know, real time and batch and all of that, but it's now also available across cloud and on-prem. So the challenge we face about data going, you know, high, structured, unstructured continues, but now we have to deal with the hybrid world. So that's, that's the pattern that's emerged, which has also become some sort of a challenge because you have to deal with egress costs, you have to deal with, you know, uh, uh, privacy as was highlighted earlier. A lot of new things have emerged, right? The second big thing that's emerged is that data requires more than SQL, right? Uh, SQL is still very, very prevalent today and I think rightly so, right? We've all grew up writing SQL queries on, on backend systems, but the world of SQL has moved on and you will see a lot of new platforms that have emerged. There's no SQL using ML as part of the core, core data system and so on. And that's, that's given rise to the bottom part again, saying, you know, you've got ML, you've got AI, you've got streaming, all of that. But now you've got applications that use data inherently as part of what, what they do. And I'll again share some examples with you uh, in subsequent slides, right? So that's the second big area or pattern that's emerged for us. The third one is, again, everybody talks about, you know, creating, democratizing data, making it available to everyone. Not, not a new problem or not a new challenge, but the last one has become, we believe, in the last few uh, years as an additional area of concern or, or maybe a challenge of sorts, right? Saying, yes, it's mission critical. It's become part core to the business. It's available by hopefully everyone, but now it's also a shareable asset. It's no longer something that an organization themselves hold on to uh, their piece, but it's now available to partners, it's available to customers, it's available to suppliers, everybody. So data, thinking about data, uh, more of a shareable asset and not necessarily just as something that you look at to, of course, make decisions better, right? So those are some uh, broad level views that we looked at saying, you know, yes, it's big in multi-format, it requires more than SQL, it has to be shareable in nature, and that's when additional problems start to multiply because you're trying to fix one problem 
and you know you're trying to create another problem because of that. So you end up creating a lot more copies. Every every small department starts to do their own thing, and cloud, of course, doesn't help because now it's so easy to do it, right? Cloud makes it so simple for you to spin up a a virtual machine or spin up a data. Uh, you know, data system at the back. So that has resulted in a lot more problems that we're trying to address, right? And that has, again, cascaded to the people who pay for it, right? It, it of course, generates duplicate cost as well. You have to do a lot more time in ensuring that you have the right capacity and planning available. So a lot, and of course, SLAs, compliance, a lot of things that have emerged. So we're saying, you know, we started off saying that there's so much more we can do. We uncovered new patterns, uncovered new problems that led to more problems, right? Uh, so we know that there is, of course, this uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but just to get there, we're hitting so many bumps, right? And I don't think we'll stop. It will it will continue if you ask me, right? It's just about how best we manage it, how best we're able to address some of these issues and still get what we're trying to get. Don't think about it as, as an afterthought, but something that we're starting to build. And that's what we're seeing, right? We're seeing cloud has, in the last four, five, or maybe more, has started to become a, a platform that various organizations are applying for, for different things, right? So whether it's purely looking at optimizing infrastructure, that's what it started, right? If you think about the whole virtual machines moving from your uh, data centers to the cloud, that has become so common now, right? Almost everybody's doing it. But one of the other things, those challenges that I spoke about earlier is also because, you know, people are now starting to look at cloud as a viable option for running huge data systems. And there are a whole lot of reasons that we can get into, hopefully, you know, you're already familiar as well. So data, this has become a key building block for us. And the point I want to drive is that, you know, uh, it has moved on from being a DSS. If you've been in this industry for a while, we used to refer to data platforms as DSS, right? Decision support systems. And it's no longer just a decision support system in, in our view, right? It has. So if you look at it, it's more like the uh, what customers or most organizations expect. I'll have a box in the middle, which is my, my data platform, which is doing hundreds of things. I will feed it a piece of data coming back, stream, Structured, unstructured, what, whatever, right? Uh, and you have these uh, this engine is sitting in the middle that's supposed to ingest, process, generate patterns, generate visualization, do machine learning, do AI, and hopefully I will get a comparative advantage because of doing that. It's still it's still a va very very valid outcome that most organizations look for, and that that will continue, right? But we believe it's become core to the business. It's no longer used as a system for me to take a decision where to invest, where to save money. Of course, that is extremely critical as well. It will do that part of the, of the whole puzzle too. But it, will be, it has become the core. And these are just some examples. They're not necessarily Google customers, but I just wanted to put out that, of course, Google, data is a core of the business. Somebody like a Flipkart, right, doing retail, data is core of the business. They, don't, they can't really operate in, at certain levels without Uber, you all know, Tata New, and so on. So we're saying, how do you move from just looking at it as a, as a DSS is of sorts to becoming core to the way you run your business, right? And there's opportunity in every industry. It is not just for digital natives who are, who are launching a new service and hence they're able to do it in a better and nimble fashion. Of course they are and they will and, and, and that's the way they, that things should operate now. But if you look at any industry today that's starting to look at saying, I don't want to use data just as pure as supporting my decisions, but it has to be core to the way you run your business. It has to be the core to the way you do forecasting. Uh, you know, there was search again we spoke about. It has to be core to the way customers interact with me and the behavioral insights that you can get uh, while retail, retailers, for example, do. It has to be core to, uh, you know, healthcare we just spoke about. You know, I don't even need to talk examples because they were so well covered in the earlier session. Financial services has been looking at it for a long time. Media. So there's opportunity for everybody. This, and, and again, looking at building it as part of the core. So in the next few minutes, maybe I'll, I'll pick up few examples in terms of what, how are organizations starting to look at using data as a platform uh, as part of the core operations and not just as a support function anymore, right? So retail search, uh, Google in fact uh, created a service out of this called, uh, called uh, product discovery and we have a few retailers globally of course and in India starting to use this. Think about this as a search engine for your, your, uh, your environment, right? For your e-commerce portal of sorts, right? So, what it does essentially is, of course, doing a lot of data at the back, but it's keeping all of it transparent to you. Uh, when I say you, is you as an organization. Of course, to the end user, it's transparent, but also to an to a e-commerce retailer, it's transparent. All the complexity is done, and it's available as an API or available as a service called product discovery, right? So, so same thing, think about it, right? It, autocomplete. So like you do autocomplete in, in Google search, it will do autocomplete in the product that you're trying to look for or searching for. It'll come up with uh, recommendations, which is, of course, extremely important, right? 
In fact, there was a big uh, research that said most of the videos that you watch on YouTube, 70 or 75% plus, are because of recommendations. People are not going to and searching. What you get recommended is what you end up watching. So it's, it's so powerful. You're actually, you know, guiding behavior of sorts, right? Uh, so recommendation, of course, the paid listings to monetize it. If you want to, you know, start ads on it, that's of course a very good revenue channel. And of course, the whole optimization on the time it loads, what gets shown, all of that, right? So all of that, and of course, for web and, and the mobile part. So this is an example of saying, this is actually, this is data and analytics, right? You might, you would think about a nice dashboard as data and analytics. Of course, that is decision support. But this has now become core to the way this retailer might operate, right? And that's essentially how we're looking at it. So then you start to expand it further, saying, I want to be able to enable voice as an input. I want to have, uh, you know, go, use Google Lens as a technology to enable search based on images. Of course, text has been around for a while. But at the back end, as I was saying, a lot, lot is happening. We're trying to understand the query. We're trying to understand the semantics of it. We're trying to understand uh, there is a backend technology called knowledge graph, right? Which is how are different entities listed overall and connected to each other. All of that. A lot of modeling happening at the back. And then, of course, there is the real data that has to get fed in uh, by the first party systems, right? Which is what you're actually selling. What market research are you doing? Uh, which is, of course, second uh, second party data, but all of that, right? The rules that you want to configure. And then that becomes this API, which we're calling as product discovery API. So think about you using really powerful analytics as an API and cloud essentially taking care of all the work. I wouldn't say all, it would be wrong to say all, but a lot of it uh, at the back end for you, right? So that's that's the way analytic systems are evolving. Uh, uh, and, and another industry, another example, uh, very, very common again, we use something called Intelligent Manufacturing Connect Edge. Uh, this is, again, it uses uh, the ability to capture data from machines that generate sensors, put it into a factory data lake of sorts, right? And then run the models on top, right? Whether it's processing, understanding formats, trying to look at what you're trying to do. Again, you wouldn't think about this as a data and analytic use case. It absolutely is. It's running core to the way you run your factories and machines, right? And there was, again, uh, discussion about visual data, and that's become extremely common too, right? Look, think about an assembly line that, that, that is passing the goods, and there is a video camera that is capturing both video and image data, and detecting what is defective, what is acceptable, what to move on to a defective, uh, uh, you know, line, and what should move ahead. Amount of time it saves, effort it saves, uh, the, the, the supply chain impact it has is tremendous, right? So you're, you're detecting at the surface as well, even a faintest of crack, paint, all of that, uh, conforming to your standards, uh, all the packaging, labeling, all of that using visual data, right? Think about it. This is also an analytics use case for us, right? It's no longer just uh, decision support, as I was saying. Take it even further. You know, you do, uh, the, the, the video identifies a defect, but what caused that defect? I'm not just interested in knowing it's a defect, which is good. I can move it out, but it's still a loss for you as an organization because you have to deal with that. Uh, defective part, you have to go back to your supplier and get the new uh, batch of, uh, you know, input that comes to you and so on. You want to get to the root cause, right? So, you, so the visual inspection is trying to tell you what is the problem, which is the, the crack or whatever. And then you start to look at, you know, uh, the root cause analysis to say eliminating the source of defects, ensuring it doesn't happen again, the whole learning cycle, right, that we're talking about. So this is another example where we think we're seeing organizations look at adopting analytics, but but not, of course, for an afterthought, but it's becoming core to the way they produce goods right now. And let's take, switch another example. And I'll, again, Avik spoke a lot about this, uh, more from trying to look at, uh, you know, non-English speaking uh, community, which is huge. Of course, we in India, we know how many languages we have. And Google spent a lot of time in understanding those nuances of languages. So think about, you know, engaging with the whole uh, rural and what we refer to as semi-urban India, right, where dialects, language, a combination of languages is, is extremely important. Uh, may not even be literacy uh, rates could be high too, right? So, so voice is, is a big, big means of, of interacting and engaging with your customers, right? Uh, engaging with uh, your, your uh, stakeholders that, have, that you've got. And there's a lot of learning that we take away from YouTube here. Although YouTube is, is a different uh, part of, of the organization, but the point I'm making is work that we do there eventually gets surfaced up as, as, a, as a cloud service that becomes available to organizations that allows you to understand the behavioral patterns, uh, what we do in GPay as well, right? Again, that same knowledge becomes part of a service that we made available. And I wanted to, again, take the same example that was shared earlier and how we're starting to apply analytics and engaging with, uh, let's say, the farmer community, right? So Google Lens, if you're all familiar, right? 
Uh, Google Lens now has the ability to convert uh, a package that they read uh, and into a language that they understand, right? Or, or speak it out for them. That's what we're trying to do with the whole site part of it, right? So point and scan, translation, reading it aloud so that they are informed about what's there. Again, you might not think of this as analytics, but there's a lot of analytics happening at the back, right? Uh, language, of course, is important. Uh, conversation, right? Talking to somebody at the back end and still having uh, somebody respond in an automated manner. We've already done this, by the way. Internally, there's a dedicated uh, company within Google called Mineral X that does focus purely on the whole agri side of things, similar to what was being discussed earlier. So a lot of data that's powering all of this, right? So, and, and we don't stop there. So data, if you look at it, uh, the whole analytics thing is, uh, of course, the core platform, infra, technology, everything that you can think about. Uh, the way you build your models is the second dimension to it. The third very important dimension is data itself, right? And not data that you produce, but data that's available outside of your purview. So Google Earth is a good example of what we use a lot in this space, which is Earth engine data, satellite data, uh, to feed into these uh, you know, systems at the back that power all of this, whether it's yield prediction, insurance, forecasting, all of that, right? And a good example I want to share, which is actually a published example, is overall globally Unilever trying to do this uh, for trying to look at the whole palm oil uh, supply chain that they get from sustainable farms. So they use the earth engine data, they put it into a, uh, into a platform in the middle that you see there, and based on that, they essentially look at which supplier to buy palm oil or not to buy from them based on how sustainable their practices are, what earth engine is selling them in terms of the deforestation in that area. So think about it, they want to say, by 2023, we will not buy from anyone who has an unsustainable practice when it comes to palm oil supply. So that's the impact that they're doing on their business, but also, of course, on all the environment. I can go on with tons and tons of examples where we're saying how data has become part of core to the business and no longer a decision support system. And for that, we're saying, ultimately, either you choose to look, buy it, uh, you know, consume it as an API, but you still need to build a lot of that capability at the back end to ensure you're capturing the right data, ensuring that you have the right people monitoring it, all of that, right? So we believe we're referring to it as a you know, limitless data cloud of sorts, right? So we're saying, don't worry about what data it is, what format it's at. Uh, don't worry about you know, who you want this to consume, whether it's a farmer, whether it's your, your executives who sit in the office, whether it's the field force, doesn't matter. And don't think about it as you know, what do I bring in, what do I not bring in, right? Experiment, limitless workload is what we're saying, right? And that's exactly what we're trying to do with Google, uh, you know, building a data platform. And that's based on a lot of research that's already gone in, right? Uh, Again, if, you, if you've been using data uh, for, for a while, you, you've heard of things like Hadoop, you've heard of things like you know, uh, Drill, uh, Kubernetes, all of that. That all was a Google white paper at one point in time, right? If you go back 20 years or so, it was a Google white paper. Uh, HDFS file system was a Google white paper that became open source, and now it became, of course, it became as a distribution, and then Google starts to offer it as its own service called Dataproc. Uh, same thing if you, if you know BigQuery, BigQuery was a white paper, right? Uh, it's also available in its open source format, right? But the, the way we're trying to look at it is package it as a service, have some SLAs built around it, and, and make it available to a larger population for their enterprise and real world applications. So a lot of work that's happened from a research point of view without going into too much detail. And that, that is how it's starting to emerge, the picture in the last few years, I would say. Uh, the whole, the Google Data Cloud as we're calling it, right? Again, right from the time you want to input that data, process it, visualize it, build the models, make it available as APIs, no matter who's consuming at the front, an, a tech person or a non-tech person, how are you trying to look at it from a uh, you know, downstream application point of view, there is this entire set of pieces of the puzzle that have come together as what we're referring to as, as a data cloud, right? So all of that, and all of it is on open source technology. It might be packaged as a, as, as a platform service, which means yes, there is a Google element to it, but the underlying is all open source. That's the core principle that, that, that we believe in, right? And, and that is the core data. And the last slide I have without uh, you know, uh, going into other details is what we're referring to as Vertex AI, which is the ML part on top of the core data platform. So build your own notebooks, run things like ML ops that, uh, to, to make it much more easy to use and, and manage as well. So you have DevOps and of course you have ML ops now. Uh, use it as an API, uh, whether it's vision, whether it's speech, whether it's uh, you know, the whole NLP side of things, all of that. Run it on any platform, Hadoop, Spark, the core, uh, you know, relational, non-relational, SQL, non-SQL. Think about those three areas I spoke about, right? Uh, whether it's the type of data, whether it's going beyond SQL, making it available as a shareable asset, right? And then, of course, things like AutoML allow you to use your 
own own uh, data, but running Google's technology at the back, right? So lots happening in this space. Uh, I'll stop here, but hopefully, you know, wanted to just give you a quick glimpse of saying, let's move away from referring it to as a DSS. If one thing I'd want you to take away is that it's no longer DSS. Data is part of the core business. It's the way you run your organization today. And of course, that needs this technology to power it eventually. So thank you so much.